everybody, welcome back to my studio. I'm Nettie Kay. If you were with us last time, you may recall that we did something a little bit different. Yeah, uh, I actually showed you how to stretch a canvas uh, in an odd size, in an 8 by 16, for one of my customers on my Etsy site. Uh, my Etsy site is nettiekaystudio.etsy.com and one of my customers went on and said, hey, can you paint me another dog on an 8 by 16 to go with the last one you did? Uh, she has a couple of them in that size and she wanted to kind of hang them all together. So that's why we did that. So I wanted to show you how this painting is coming out. And this is the painting that I am working on right now. I'm just about finished with it. And so I think it's going to be a good one, don't you? Yeah. So I'm going to put that aside. But the next thing we're going to do today is I'm going to uh, paint this silver and white cat uh, for another customer on my Etsy site. And this one has got a different, a uh, little different twist to it in that it's blind in one eye. And so it's got kind of funky, uh, you know, kind of unique eye on one side and a regular eye on the other. So I kind of know what that's about. My own son, uh, Lincoln, is uh, legally blind in one eye. Yeah, so I can really relate to this cat. Anyway, let's get going on this and uh, I'll show you how I start it and we'll see how far we get. All right. Let's do it. Okay, the customer ordered this particular painting on an 8x10 panel. Uh, I'm not talking about canvas boards, you guys. Boy, I don't paint on those if I can ever get away with it. Uh, because usually they're kind of backed with cardboard or something. So I don't usually paint on the old cheapo canvas panels. No, I don't. I like these. These, is, these are masonite that my husband cuts out and then I put in about two layers of gesso on there and allow it to dry. And then I put a little bit of a rough drawing of the cat that we're doing and uh, so that I have the position of the head ready to go. And then before I put any paint on it, I do this, you guys. I take some little cheap uh, aerosol hairspray and I spray it like this. And then I'm going to let this dry for a couple of seconds. Why do I do that? Well, it fixes the, uh, the drawing right onto the board to where even if I hit this with turpentine, or not turpentine, I use odorless thinner, uh, then uh, that drawing's not even going to go anywhere. It stays underneath so that I don't lose it. And I can always go and refer back to it just by wiping the paint off around it. So uh, it's a, a good way to do it. So you just... You know, you don't have to buy expensive fixative. Just get yourself some, you know, cheap suave hairspray and spray that down lightly. Don't get too crazy to where it's dripping off or anything. Uh, and then let it dry. And then we're going to go in and put our paint on. And that drawing will stay right there. Miracle. Yeah. Okay, let's get going. Okay, so now I have my panel up on my easel. Uh, and I've kind of supported it with another backing board because if it's a small little piece of art, sometimes it can go flying if it doesn't have some good stability behind it. So that's why I did that. And uh, I have on my palette, I have some various different colors. I think I'm going to put the background in a, a teal color. I've got a little bit of, uh, what is this one? This is called uh, Cobalt Teal. And I've got some phthalo turquoise. I've got a little bit of a magenta color. I have a really light cadmium yellow light and a cadmium red light right here. There's a big difference between cadmium red and cadmium red light, but that's for another day. And then down here I have my medium, which is not a psychic medium. It's the medium. It just is what will help my paint to uh, go a little bit more smoothly and not uh, just, you know, make the colors all dull. If you use thinner, uh, your colors uh, will, it, it'll make it very thin, but it also will cause the colors to go a little bit flat. So when you're using you, a medium, it, it helps a little bit more if it's more like an oil medium. And this one is called Neo Megelp from Gamblin, which is one that I use almost every day. Yes. And I have some titanium white. Okay, so let's get going. Yeah. So I think on this one, I'm going to, I've got my little photo and I'll, I'll post it up here so you can see it behind my head or someplace. 
and I'm going to begin, I've got uh, the sketch of the, the little animal on here with uh, the body right here. So I'm going to start out, I think I'm going to put a little bit of my medium on, and I want to begin with my dark um, thalo turquoise and see what that looks like. Ooh, that's very pretty. And so I'm going to come around the animal so that I'm painting what's behind uh, the critter before I paint the animal. We'll just test it that way. You don't always have to do it that way, but I find it to be kind of helpful so that you can paint the fur going into the background. Okay, especially if it's a big fluffy thing. Uh, this one is uh, looks like it's a short-haired cat, and that's good. So I'm going to put a little thalo turquoise, and then I'm going to go into the cobalt teal and see if that makes it more interesting. And we'll just go and just kind of come around the animal's head like this. I like that. Uh, let's see, so the, the animal is also going to have a light chest down here, so I do think I'm going to keep going with this thalo turquoise. That's a beautiful color. I love it. Probably one of my favorites. I just ordered this tube of paint and I'm really excited about using it. I can get a little too carried away with it too. So one of the, the favorite combinations when you're painting with this color is to, you know, especially in a landscape or whatever, is to put in something like an orange or a dash of kind of a peach color in the into the, the landscape. But this this is a good good one. I used this one on that dog that I just shown you showed you. I used the uh, thalo turquoise with the red to create a very dark value. So I used a, a cadmium red medium with thalo and created a wonderful uh, dark, dark, dark um, value, almost black. Okay, but a little bit warmer. There we go. All right, well, that's a good start. Okay, let's mess around a little bit. Okay, I'm going to put in my thalo turquoise. I'm going to do it over here so you can see. And some of my dioxazine purple, a little bit more turquoise. And you can see it just gives it a really dark value. Well, what does it look like when I add a little white to that? There we go. Okay, now that's kind of a grayish purple. And then what if I put in a little bit of that red? That turns it into a gray. That's a warm gray. And so that's kind of what I'm looking for for the uh, basic part of the cat. And so I, then I'll, I will wipe off my brush and I'm going to do a very light rendering of that or a light, light rendition of that by uh, putting in a little bit of the white. Okay. And if it's too blue, I'm going to go back into this kind of orangey red and tone it down. I'm playing around with it. So it's not just a gray cat, okay? It's not just a black and white cat. I want it to be more interesting than that. So that's why I make my own gray, not with black and white. I mean, you can do that if you want, but I think it's gonna be much more interesting if I make it out of turquoise, uh, quinacridone violet, and a little bit of cadmium red light. What? Yeah, and some white. Okay, let's try it. I'm going to wipe off my brush and we're going to get in to the value of the cat. First off, I think what we'll do is we're going to take some white on the brush, dip into that, that uh, gray mixture that I just made, and I'm going to create this interesting grayish color that I made with this kind of a purpley, well, wild and crazy combination. And then I'm going to base that out a little bit like that. This is just a kind of a rough uh, brush, which makes it interesting because it looks, it just instantly makes some of the hairs that you need. But uh, I'm just going to paint that in like that. Okay, so round, round, round. And then I want this darker in the background. So I'm going to put some more of that cadmium red into our dark mixture right here. And I, this is a very shadowy color right there. So if you could see this up close, you would see little strokes of even red 
and teal and purple because I didn't just mix the tar out of it. I want it to be interesting. So when I'm mixing a color, I don't mix and mix and mix and mix and then just, you know, make it boring. So I'm, I'm creating uh, interest by leaving streaks of red and turquoise and various, whatever I'm mixing, I don't mix it all up and turn it into, you know, paint in a blender. No, you can get that at the hardware store. You're an artist, do something different. So we're putting that on, and now I'm just finding where the dark values are on this cat. I can come up in here and begin to kind of create a little bit of a, an illusion of some stripes, that kind of thing. It's not super stripey, but uh, from what I can tell, it's just got kind of a, an indication of some. And then I'm going to come in here onto its little head. I'm going to indicate the inside of the ear right there. And we'll just keep coming around until I get what I want. There we go. Go fast. I like this color combination. It's good. Again, if it's too, you know, if it's too um, tealy, then I want to put in a warm uh, red into it in order to make that uh, turn into something else. The Art of Gray, you know, I don't think a lot of people would watch it if I posted a, a video on it, but I think it would be helpful to you if, um, if we talked about the different ways of making interesting grays, because gray really will set off other colors uh, really nicely. So, um, but again, not black and white. I don't use black and white. That's just, you know, old style painting of of, you know, crafters more so than artists, just saying. All right, now I'm going to come up a little bit lighter now, and we'll come in over here. That's a middle tone. You can see if I put that next to that, you can kind of tell that that's a middle tone. And I'll put a little middle tone down here in the shadows. And let's get a little bit lighter now in a few spots. So I'll come over adding some white to it. Okay, good. I could also add just a touch of yellow to it. I don't know if that's going to make it, you got to be careful because it could turn it green, but I think it needs a little bit of kind of a sunlight feel to it right there. So let's do that. And I'm going to take this lighter uh, version of that gray that's a little bit warmer and put it on the inside of the ear because the inside of the ear is nice and warm. It's not pink. You know, not every cat's ears are pink on the inside. This one's got an uh, actual kind of a white uh, inside, white and gray. So we'll make that nice and great. We're going to come around here. It's darker on the inset here, so I'll, I'll put a little darker, darker part right there. But that's kind of that middle tone. And then I'm going to add some white hairs in there so it, it'll really pop out really well. So I'm going to put a little bit of that there. A little on the bridge of the nose, and I like that color. This is really good. And then I got to watch out because there's a little white, white nose. Now, what am I going to do with that? Well, we'll just figure it out. It's going to be interesting. Uh, you don't want to just paint white on white, do you? So I might make a nice light lavender to start with, or maybe just a, yeah, a light lavender. And then I'll put in the white over the top of it in order for it to make it look like it's not just the board that you've just left out. Now, a lot of times in watercolor, you know, we're not painting in watercolor, are we? But in watercolor, you would just leave the paper out. But when you're painting on canvas or on board in acrylic or um, uh, oil, you know, don't just leave that board sticking out with white paint something on it. Make sure you, you don't just neglect it, but paint something on it like that. Okay, now, I want to get a little bit more of the lighter color down here, and then it's going to go into the white here again, so we'll figure this out. Look how nice and, and light, it's almost like a light blue right there. That's nice. And we'll uh, find, I think this is just, just kind of that middle tone. I don't 
I really don't want to focus on the stripes at this point. I just sort of, you know, fiddle them in a little bit. But uh, you want to paint the structure of the cat first before you get into all the little, you know, fussy details. You, you start with the, you know, you don't paint the fleas on the dog before you paint the dog. I think it was Helen Van Wyck that used to say that all the time. So I'm going to make this a little lighter above the eye here. And I think this one does have a little more of that yellowish feel to it. So I'm going to make this slightly yellow above the eye. There, like that. This is going to go really, really fast, I have a feeling. Some of them take me days and days and days to do, but I think this one, we might luck out and not have it take too long. And then uh, I'll put the top part of the ear on here. Okay, so now this is a light lavender. Let's test that out. Yes, I love that. Okay, light lavender, which will be the base for our white part of the nose, like that. And sometimes I will put the light lavender on and then I'll let that dry and come back in. Let's see, the bottom part of the little chin is white as well. I know it doesn't look like white, but it will. So trust me on that. Mm -hmm. And he's got the little, I picked up a little teal, that's okay. I'm going to go back in with a little bit of that light there. Okay, now you can see how that begins to look a little bit more white. Put some of that into the cat over here that I'm seeing, a little bit of a lighter part. I'm going to keep this initial application, especially where I'm going to put some white over the top of it. I don't want to make it so thick that I can't uh, affect it with something else. So, got to be careful. Start thin and work your way up a little bit. Here's the uh, little edge around the ear right here. Just kind of sets it off. I'm still in this big brush. I didn't, I didn't move out of the big brush. I've got a smaller brush, but so far I don't really need it. Now, I'm going to come back in with the, and the inside of the ear with just some, basically some white, and I'm going to kind of mix it onto the canvas Rather than mixing it down on the palette, I'm going to mix it in with the paint that I've got here just a tiny bit. I'm just using the corner of the brush, and I might go back in with some, with a smaller brush later. But, but this brush is really working well for that kind of fur feel to it. Okay, now I've got my um, cadmium red light. Be careful, it's super powerful. Ooh, man. And some cadmium uh, yellow light. And then I've got that mixed a little bit, and I'm making the color for the nose. Okay, so here I am with a smaller brush, and I'm going to come in here and put that nose color right like this. Just like that. Cross, and then it does have a, a weird pigment thing that happens, so it doesn't cover the entire nose. The other side of the nose is white. So I'm going to wipe off my brush here and get some white, maybe with a tiny touch of yellow, just a tiny touch. There, okay, and whatever else is on here. And then I'm going to put that on so that it looks proper, yes. And then I can go back in and make the extra markings for this. Okay, so let's go into our dark value. I've got uh, just straight phthalo turquoise and uh, quinacridone violet. And let's see if we can get away with this without uh, even putting any black out at all. So here is the dark value of the pupil. This is the most important part, is the eyes. Yep. <clears throat> and so I've got that. I'm leaving out the little, kind of a little sparkle right there so you can see that. It's got a huge, huge pupil right there. And then there seems to be a kind of a, a dark line that goes up and around the eye like this. I should just do a big show on, on how to do eyes. That'd be fun. Spend a day on eyes all by themselves because eyes are so interesting. So now I've got this little 
little line around the outside of the eye like that. That's coming out nice. This one also has, it has a different shape. I don't know what happened to his little eye, but it's got a little different shape. It's not the same. It's not a big wide open eye right like this. So it's like this. It's got a little bit of a ring around the outside like that. And then uh, there's white right beside it. And then it goes really dark alongside the nose like that. And I'm going to modify that a little bit with, with something. Hang on. Okay, now uh, I'll modify this just a tiny bit with a rag or some Q-tips. And then while I've got this on my brush, I want to kind of come in and create a little bit of a shape right inside there. And then I'll, I'll mess with that a little bit. Okay, so that's a good start there. And then I want to take just a tiny, very, very light, purple, bring it down like this, and shape out that little flattened out soft W at the bottom of the nose. And let's put in the nostril with that nice dark value right there, like that. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow uh, on my brush and some white. I'm going to mix it in. It's got a, a little bit of whatever else was on my brush too. So. But it's, it's mostly uh, yellow with white and a little tiny bit of purple, but not too much. Anyway, yellow and white. And now I'm going to come in and put that in the colored part of the eye. Got a little bit of that purple in there. That's okay. Makes it interesting. And then I'll do this over here and see if I can figure out what. This is when you go in and say, okay, what am I really looking at? Okay. Uh, I'm not going to just paint the eye the way uh, it should be. I'm going to paint what I actually kind of see. So it's going to have a little, little funky chicken thing going on there. And a bit of a, a turquoise. So that it looks a little bit like that. Okay, that looks like it. Yep, that's the way it looks. Okay. Good start, everybody. And then I do want to put in an actual paint uh, drop right here so that it's not, I, again, I don't want to have just the canvas sticking out by itself. Now the light's coming from over here. And so now I'm going to take some of that lighter white and I'm going to come in over on this side. It's, it's hit there and it's coming out here. So you see how that looks so glowy? Ooh, yes, it does. And then we're going to come in underneath here with some white. And I want to shape this part out a little bit. Now, if it gets too, too uh, much paint, then you go in with some Q-tips and kind of wipe off the area that you want to uh, paint a little bit stronger. In fact, I may have to do that with this purple. Just make it a stain rather than a, a big splotch. Okay, that's looking good. I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go in and take my, my little paper towel because I've got just a little too much paint here. I want it to kind of look more like a, a, a little purple stain. That's better. There. That's the neat thing about the boards too, you guys. You can rub it almost right down to the board if you've made a mistake or anything. That's not really a mistake. It's just a a matter of just correcting the amount of paint that's on there. You can get too much. And so now I'm going to come back in with a clean brush. And I'm going to, first off, I'm going to take my Q-tip and kind of blend this out a little bit. As it comes up like this. It's a little bit dark on one side of the nose and then a little darker over here too. You know, I'll spend quite a bit of time on this, everybody. Uh, so you're not going to see everything that I'm doing, but I uh, hope you don't mind. Okay, now I'm going to come over here and we're going to put that nice light white color right there. And, you know, I can put in um, a tiny touch. Usually it would be yellow ochre or something to make it a little bit warmer so it's not just straight white. I don't like using just straight white. So this is just a tiny bit of yellow in it. And then I'm going to put that up and find, yeah, 
a little bit of yellow makes that really look as though it's, it's the color of the light rather than the color of the fur. Okay, that's what we're painting. We're painting really the way the light hits the fur rather than the color of the fur. The same thing over here. You know, I didn't paint this with black and white. I painted it with purple and red and a bunch of other colors. And it's just the way that light appears to me. Okay, now I think what I'd like to do is I'm going to take my paper towel real quick and I'm realizing that this just feels a little bit too dark. But since it's oil paint, you guys, you just come in and you give it a nice uh, little bit of a rub with your paper towel. i got to make sure I don't hit the other thing. But I'm going to give it a little bit more of a, a softer background like this. We don't want it all, you know, sketchy and and have a lot of stroke marks on it. I want it to kind of be nice and soft because that's kind of the way the painting is. It's nice and soft. And so now I'm going to do the same thing over here so it feels more like a stain. I like this. A little bit more like a stain. And this is the advantage of using the panel as well. I think it really, really does help quite a bit to use the panel. And then Maybe I'll leave some of this in the, a little bit darker than the other. I might even darken it up a little bit. And I've got to grab onto it and get it down here a little. It makes it feel a little more like, kind of like a denim texture when you put this, the towel on it. And then you just kind of flip that up just a little bit. And we'll just kind of tidy it up a little bit. Now I'm going to come in, this is a little bit of a, a light, creamy yellow. I put out a little bit of Indian yellow. It's a little bit Indian yellow, not too much. It's really powerful. A little Indian yellow and a lot of white. And now I'll come in up here and I'm going to make this nice and uh, kind of a, a little bit of a fur right there where it's nice and light. There's some light, light, light fur. And then this comes up like that. I'm going to grab a little more of that. Again, remember when you're going back in, at the end, you can make it a little bit thicker since you start out a little bit thin. And now I'm just going to come back in and do it kind of like, like this a little bit to give it a little bit of a furriness as it blends in with the, uh, the fur that's in back and behind. And so I'll pull this in and out and I'm going to take it, I'm just on the edge of the brush like this and I'm going to just kind of Jiggle it back and forth like like little zipper teeth, kind of like that. Like this, and so it makes it nice and furry. And I think I'll, I'll pull this into the, the background a little bit like that. That looks nice. So you can see that's how I can make it uh, feel as though it's got a sense of, of little fuzz on it. So I'll come up here and we'll give this, this part a little bit of a fuzzy head that yeah and now I want to go in and get a little bit darker right up in here let's see well that's nice and dark right there let's see if I can find it we've got this little bit of a stripiness right here and then a little bit right in here and we're just kind of flying through this thing again I'm going to be spending quite a bit more time on it uh, just kind of tidying up all of the little marks to where it looks nice and finished properly without being overdone. And now you see I'm taking my little brush like this. This is a little sable brush and I'm I'm coming in right where that line is and giving it a little bit of a, a shadow effect right here. And I have a little bit right in here that's happening. I need a little bit darker under this eye. I've got to fix this little weird part right here. I might have to add a little more white to it there. And then the dark part that kind of comes up like this. And then I better find out what's happening with the shadow underneath the little chin. And this is a little bit blended in there. This is actually in the gray side right here. I, I made it white so I need to make it nice light gray. And then I'm going to go back in with a little dark right in here 
as the face turns a little bit. It's a little bit on the blue side, so I might have to adjust that when you're not looking. And then let's see, we've got some more of this kind of darker, darker fur down here. Like that. And I'm going to trim this up just a tad because it's not a long haired cat, it's a, a short haired. So I'm just kind of dusting over the top with my brush like this. Okay, that wraps it up for today, except for I want to show you one more thing we're going to try. We're going to be using kind of a little, oh, it's kind of like a credit card, and uh, I'm going to put some white paint along the edge of, uh, I think I'll probably put it along the short edge of this, and I'm just going to dip it in to my white paint. I'm going to blot a little bit off so that I don't have big glumps, but I'm thinking this is a really good idea for making whiskers, and so I want to see which direction they're going. Uh, let's go this way and see if this works. I'll put one this direction like this, and we'll just put that on. Look at that, okay? Now, if I want to make them kind of curved, I can just kind of curve the card a little bit like this and make them so they're not just a straight line. I think that would be better. So you can kind of manipulate that a little bit, and then we'll see if I can make one that kind of goes down like this, like that. Wow, that works great. I love that. So uh, I will see you guys in a little bit, and the next time we meet, who knows what we'll be doing, but I know we'll have a lot of fun, and so I hope you'll join me. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you again next time. Yeah, bye-bye for now.